Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about installing Visual Studio and then creating our first script using SAPI. If you're not familiar with SAPI, then I have an introduction video that I'll link below in the description. For installing Visual Studio, first I want to cover some do's and don'ts. If you're on a personal computer or a research box or an Eclipse test box, then you can absolutely install Visual Studio. If you're on your work PC and you use Citrix, then you may need help to install that depending on your administrator settings. However, if you are on a clinical Eclipse box, uh, Visual Studio is actually not one of their approved softwares that you can install on that box. So what they want you to do is to install it on a research box and develop everything there where you can test things. So you have a clinical database and then you have a research database. So you can test your scripts make sure they're debugged and that they're working properly and then transfer them over to your clinical database once they've been approved. But if you're accessing via Citrix or, you know, if it's your personal computer, then absolutely you can install it. We're going to be using the Community Edition version 2019. Hold up. Stop right there. You're listening to Old Me. Old Me is dumb. Old Me uses Visual Studio 2019 or even 2017. Instead, be like new me and use version 2022. You're going to go to visualstudio.microsoft.com and you're going to download the Community 2022 edition and just follow the steps from there. Now, back to your previously scheduled program. Once I select free download, it's going to download the installer. I'll just click that to run. Depending on your administration settings, then you'll approve that. And I already have it installed, so mine may go a little bit faster. But what it's going to do is it's going to bring up the installer. Instead of installing everything, They've created this installer that allows you to pick which pieces of Visual Studio that you want to use. Overall, it's a very large program. This is saying that I have an update available. I'll work with that later. You can see I have 2017 and I also have 2019. So what you might have seen is you might have just seen this. And yours may be white. I'll get to that in a minute. But... I think the default setting is a white background. Once you get to this page, there's these workloads and individual components that you can select, but think of these as just groups. So if you click on .NET desktop development, this is the one that you're going to want for what we're going to be doing. There's other things like Python, web development, gaming or game development. You can use Unity, things like that. But like I said, this is all you need for what we're using. And so you just select that. And then some of these things will be checked. You'll select install. Mine's already installed, so it just says close. If you ever need to get back to this, if you're running Windows, you can just hit your Windows key or you can go to like the start menu and you can search for Visual Studio installer. Once you click the installer, it will pop back up. Once you open it, it may ask you to sign in. All you need in order to sign in is a Microsoft account. And if, you, if you're using Windows and you have your own PC or laptop, then you probably have a Microsoft account. So you can either use that or you can create a new one. And then the next thing that it'll ask you for are some initial settings. So the first dropdown that I received was the default was general, which is, that's just what I selected. I believe it just allows you to tailor some of your settings more toward if you have specific types of development like specific languages or that sort of thing. I just select a general. The other thing that you can do is you can select your theme. If you just ran through and selected the defaults, then your background, if you've opened it, it's probably white or it may be the blue theme. As you can see by this picture, mine is dark though. When I open Visual Studio, if I select continue without code, then it looks like this. If yours is white, you would go to tools and then options. So I have the dark theme selected. You have light blue and then blue with extra contrast. Mine is the dark theme. As far as using or creating our first script, I'm actually going to use the Eclipse script wizard. So if you're on a test box or a research box, then you will open up a file explorer and you would go to your C drive. So this PC, your C drive, and then it's probably going to be in your program files, x86. You'll probably have a Varian folder here. So you'll go to Varian, RTM, version 15.6, Asapi, 
And then your script wizard will probably just be called script wizard. I've relabeled it as version 15 because I also have version 16 because we're upgrading soon. If you only need the DLLs for the standard API, they are in this API folder. So you have .model, .api, and .types, and you would just need these two DLLs. We have create new script and we have copy example scripts. So if you go here, I think there's four example scripts that they will copy to whatever directory that you have selected. And I'm going to name it. And we're just going to name it. Well, I'm going to name it Hello Asapi. If you're familiar with programming or the history of programming, generally speaking, the first program that you'll write is something that just prints out Hello World. And it dates back to the 60s or 70s, I believe, I think, depending on what sources you look at. So we're just going to write a script that will print out a message to the user that says, hello, Asapi. For Eclipse, if you're using the wizard, you've got some options. You've got single file plugin, binary plugin, standalone executable, and visual scripting action pack. We won't be really going into visual scripting much, at least for now. So a single file is just that. It's a single .cs file. And plugin, what plugin means is that it actually plugs into the Eclipse system and it gets compiled on the Eclipse server and then it gets run. I may not be describing that completely accurately, but essentially you have to run it within Eclipse and a standalone executable will run on its own. The difference between these two plugins is that if you just need a script that you want to write that you don't want to have to compile, then all you need is a single file. And if you need something that can offer a multiple file support and that you want to compile maybe into a class library or something like that, and then maybe reference that library in your other projects, then you might want a binary plugin. We're just going to select the single file plugin. So we've selected our directory, we've named it, and it doesn't like spaces here, just in case you can select create. And then it will ask you if you want to launch Visual Studio. And then let me show you what it actually did. It will create a plugins folder and a projects folder. If we open this plugins folder, we can see our single file script. This is what Eclipse gives you. They've added this comment, this commented line that says to do, add your code here. But do you notice we don't get any assistance here? If I hover over this, it doesn't tell me anything. This is what happens when you just use a single file. I'm going to actually undo everything and I'm going to save it to put it back to its normal state or its initial state. And I'm going to go into the projects folder and created a directory with your project name. Then inside that, it has a C sharp Visual Studio project file. So the CS proj. By using the project file, we have access to the DLLs, which are the references. And so you can see there's other references as well. So like system, system.core, data, XML, et cetera. So these are just some of the basic ones that generally are added. And what happens is, is inside of each of these libraries, there are namespaces. Okay, so if we open up this script, this program file, all of these give access to these namespaces. And that's what these are. Okay, so you can see that we, we have a namespace right here. Think of a namespace as a way to categorize or group things. And then you can have sub namespaces. All plugins have to have this namespace. So in order for it to be run by Eclipse, what it's going to do is it's going to look for this namespace and it's going to look for a script and then this method called execute. So now you can see, well, I hope you can see as you type message, you get all these options now, whereas before we didn't get anything. And so. I could just double click this and it will fill it out for me. I can say message box dot show. And I want to say, hello, Sappy. because this is a project, I want this to be reflected in the plugins folder. If we open this and then open this file, if you remember, I deleted this, but because it gets changed, let's close this and let's make another change. Let's just add a note. This is a common, and if I open this file again, I remember this is in the plugins folder now. It now has our comment. By using this, this method of having the project, it allows us this reference. Because we have the, the VMS.TPS, you know, API and types, 
we have access to those classes. If we wanted to, we could say patient. So it knows what a patient is because patient exists in the API namespace. And so we could say patient P equals home text dot patient. It doesn't have access to everything. It's just some of the basic things. And actually, if you just want to look, you can click this little wrench. And th these are all of the properties. That is the benefit of using this project file as opposed to just the single file because we can add these references. I've logged into Eclipse. And so what you need to do is you'll have, you'll go to tools and then scripts, and then you'll need to select your folder. Unless you've placed it in your published scripts folder, what you want to do is go into your plugins directory. And then you notice that there's nothing here. But if I look here, then it is there. We can click open and we'll see it. But if you want to see it in this list, then you just need to select all files. So now we can see it. So you'll open that directory and then you can either double click or you can highlight it and then select a run. So I'll just double click it and it will print our message. So it says, hello, Asapi. And just to show that this script is running, let's change our script a little bit. And let's say, let's add another message box that sends the plan ID. We'll do context and you, unless you're familiar, then you won't know this, but it's plan setup dot. And th that's only if you have a plan open. If you don't have a plan open, then it will crash. But if you have a plan open, then you'll say plan setup dot ID and this dot show, this message box, if you hover over it, it shows you that it takes a string and we'll get more into that later. But if you hover over ID, you'll see that it is a string. So if it wasn't a string, like if we just sub this, we'll get these red squigglies and then I'll go back and I don't have to do anything because this is just a single file. And that is the actual benefit of a single file. When we start getting into binary plugins, you'll notice that we have to change the name and all these other things. So. We're just going to run it again. And so we get our first message and now we get our second message that says prostate SIB. So that's our plan ID. And that is our first Eclipse script that we've run together or that we've made together. So if it is your first script, congratulations. And you are now a developer. So you should give yourself a pat on the back. If you've written many, many lines of code before, then hang in there and we'll get into some more in-depth things as well. Thanks, everyone. I hope you have a great day.